But um, uh, Michael Kroger, in these priorities, uh, you know, the, the, the speech you give on the night that you claim victory is the one you've been dreaming of every minute of your political life. It's it's the ultimate expression of your your inner being. This is, and he singled out two issues of priority to the upper middle class that won't actually affect the way we live, apart from the cost of them, um, and, but not the cost of living. Now, why do you think that is? It's got a touch of the Whitlam's to me. Well, I was just about to say, he's a poor man's Gough Whitlam. I mean, during the entirety of the Whitlam government, one of the things which stood out, you know, palpably was Whitlam's aversion to ever talking about economics. And, you know, in the parliament, in, in the community, at press conferences, Gough never liked to talk about the economy because he wasn't particularly interested in it. He was interested in all the other things that uh, he did uh, for those that were alive then. And Albo's a bit the same. He's not particularly interested in economics. We know that. We've seen his performance. We know what happened during the campaign when he was asked the most basic of questions that he couldn't answer. So his aversion to economics and anything to do with economics came through in that speech. And yes, Andrew, it is extremely alarming because what we know is what he was saying during the campaign was just what his advisor said he had to say to be credible on economics. But we know it's not his first love, it's not his second love. He's not terribly interested, quite frankly. And that's a big worry. But Michael, can I just tell you what alarms me? Liberals, your party, had nine years in government. Nine years. And I'm asking, what on earth did they do with all that power in all that time? What legacy have they left? And will they now regret wasted years? Well, I think every government, you know, reg regrets wasted opportunities. Obviously, a failure to reform the ABC uh, and, and allow it to continue to campaign against the federal Liberal government, which they did for years, is, is the glaring example of, of, of one significant failure. And it was also a failure of one of the few failures of the Howard government. But look, there were many successes. You start off with 13 with Tony Abbott, who, who secured our borders, who saved thousands of lives. He and, and Morrison and Dutton, by the way, over those years with tremendous courage against all the opposition of the left and what happened in the end is a lesson to people in the party an unpopular decision by the government became immensely popular became correct and in the end the Labor Party ran towards the policy and embraced Peter Dutton and grabbed him and said there's not an inch between you and us on the, on this policy so uh, yeah, you know, the, Michael, the government started very well with, I, with that. I, I was I approved of that the, I approved of that policy for most Australians, it didn't make much difference in the, the way they lived. The stewardship, and it was the stewardship back, during the stewardship during back COVID seven, was very eight, good. And nine years ago, no, nine I was just years starting, ago, no, no, I was starting at the beginning, Andrew. Since. The stu Frydenberg's, no, well, Frydenberg <laughs> stewardship during the pandemic was outstanding. <laughs> outstanding. It was outstanding. Well, okay. He kept, he kept Look, this I've got economy to go. I'm alive. Sorry. He kept this economy alive, Andrew. Steve, I'll have to ask. Yeah, well, there is that. That's that's okay. One, okay. Um, Steve Conroy, I'm sorry, I've run out of time. Well, I'm going to ask more, you next Andrew. week about to sum up. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you next week to sum up where you think, uh, what impression you think uh, Albanese is going to make in the country. Thank you very much to you both, Michael Crowe, Steve Conroy.